Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Praveen Sekhan again from Edutech India, and welcome to this next panel session on what the campus of the future could look like. Our moderator today is Dr. Manish Kotari, Managing Director of ISBR Business School. And before I hand the session over, I'd like to remind everybody watching that this panel is live and our panelists are very happy to take your questions. So do put them into the live discussion box. You'll see it right next to the video window. Now, Dr. Kotari, over to you. Enjoy the discussion, everybody. Thank you, Parveen, and uh, thank you for the panel discussion. Uh, thank you to this group for uh, making it a point. Thank you to Edutech India to see that getting all these charismatic leaders on one platform and to discuss what we call the campus of the future. We are all in the journey of either building one or we have built one. But that this is a continuous journey. And uh, it's important that all our stakeholders, right from the students till the industry body, understands what a campus of the future is all about. Future campus kya hoga? Uske ideologies kya hai? What are the type of people it is going to employ? All of this is required. So I think we'll start uh, with a introduction to all the panel members, and then we are going to dive into the topic. So for everyone, I am Manish Kuthari. I am the managing director of ISBR group of institutions. We have the School of Business Management. We have the School of Law, graduate programs, research, pre-university schools. We have been awarded AICT CII in the last five years as platinum. And yes, I have traveled across the country to various bodies to deliver lectures to various universities. Just to tell you, this topic could not have been better than what has been chosen today because of the change in the era post-pandemic, because of the NEP that has come in, because of the technological evolvement, because of the internationalization that has come in, because of the industry expectations. We need to discuss and we need to know what the campus of the future is and how the campus of the future will look like. I would like to welcome Professor uh, Siddharth Chaturvedi, Director, ASECT Group of Universities. Namaste, Siddharth Ji. Thank you, Manish. Professor Nikhil Kumar Nigam, Associate Director, Technologies, Amity Universities of the Amity Educational Group. Namaste, Professor Nikhil. Thank, thank you, Manish. Thank you. Welcoming Professor Nagraj Ram Brav, Vice Chancellor. Chancellor of Kalasingam Academy of Research and Education, a learned man. Namaste, Sirji. Namaskar. Good evening to all. Professor Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, Director of ITS Ghaziabad. Namaste, sir. Welcoming Professor uh, Sasmita Samanta, Pro Vice Chancellor, Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology. The lady amongst all of us on the center screen. Namaste, Susmita ji. So what we do is amongst all of us, each one of us take about two to three minutes time to introduce yourself and tell all your people, how do you see the campus of the future to be like? A general ideology of the campus of the future. With this, once we complete this amongst us, we straight away, we are five people. So we get into two quick rounds of questions and answers. After the questions and answers amongst us, we will then go live for all the questions and answers and take questions and answers from the audiences. So with this, I would first like to invite Professor Siddhar Chaturvedi ji, Director ISEC, to please introduce yourself and tell us about how do you see the campus of the future? Thank you, uh, Dr. Manish, and uh, it's a pleasure to be on an EduTech uh, platform. I also uh, you know, extend my uh, wishes to all the fellow panelists. My name is Siddharth, and uh, you know, our group uh, currently manages and runs five uh, universities in India. Uh, uh, the flagship university in Madhya Pradesh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore University, is uh, an, an NIRF ranked and NAC accredited university, which is based on the pillars of uh, skill development, entrepreneurship and startups and uh, community uh, uh, mobilization and the CSR uh, connect. 
uh, overall the group uh, has been a long term uh, player in the skills and vocational training space and with higher education again our focus uh, is on largely the rural uh, population since all the five campuses exist in the tier 3 uh, locations so uh, that's about the group uh, in a nutshell and uh, i've been with it uh, for the last uh, 12 years uh, as dr manish said you know this has been the talk of uh, the education ecosystem the education fraternity for last 2 years uh, all the change which was probably happening uh, on a gradual level has suddenly been accelerated in the last 2 years we are all aware of that in all our individual capacities we have made certain uh, uh, we have taken certain steps we have made certain initiatives in our campuses to to future proof uh, our campus uh, for the coming years in my mind campus of the future and i would uh, probably extend just three or four key themes and uh, uh, then then stop at that one uh is that the entire uh, digital transformation which is happening within the education sector it has now made it imperative to have a digital strategy and a digital blueprint uh, ready as important as the financial blueprint or the financial sustainability of the institution to my mind this is the first and the single uh, most important challenge uh and if institutions don't have a digital blueprint ready uh you know they should uh, get it get going and get one now because uh, it is not just about uh, you know video lectures or it is not about digital assessments but it is the entire uh, you know entire ecosystem uh, and how can you think digital uh, with the entire ecosystem and connect not just with the learners in your campus but also learners outside your campus so it is not only an imperative for existing students there also lies a future revenue stream I, I, and i'm coming straight to uh, sustainability part also so so that uh, to my mind is one the connected question also which should be talked about is that uh, you know it is an expensive affair to have a robust digital infrastructure and not just the infrastructure but also to uh, get content which can ride on that infrastructure it uh, takes a lot of uh, you know fdp programs it takes a lot of upskilling of the existing resources and lot of collaborations uh, to be done to have that kind of content uh, which can ride uh, on this so to my mind the second uh, uh, you know point which the campus of the future should take up uh, uh, take care of is the digital infrastructure and connected with that is the content uh, part and third i would say uh, in terms of campus of the future i see uh, you know which we've all uh, seen the, the mix of uh, you know the, the blended approach uh, is going to be there but we cannot put uh, yet put our finger as to the percentage of the blended approach which will be there uh we have to still see the stickiness of the changes which have happened due to covid how much of it is going to stick and how much of it is going to fade away and we're going to go back to our older uh, ways so that is still to be uh, seen but uh, definitely the blended approach is uh, going to be one of the uh, uh, out, outlying uh, factors of the campus of the future so these are some of my opening uh, remarks and i'll come back to the questions uh, later so back to you dr manish Siddharth, amazing digital transformation, content collaboration, blended approach. Of course, when a survey was done amongst the stakeholders, these were the key points that you have focused on. We will get into deep of all these points to our audience in detail. Till then, to all the audience, I would request you: if you have questions, there is a chat box. Please start typing in your questions. We will take each questions at the end of the session, and the best. question and the person who's asked that will be announced so please feel free to ask questions to your fellow panelists and we'll make it happen i would now like to invite professor nikhil kumar nigam associate director mit university to please introduce himself and give his idea and opinion of what he understands the future campus to be thank you dr pathari uh, for having me on this panel and i uh, convey my wishes to all my fellow panelists over here and feel you know prestige prestigious and uh, you know it's a great honor 
being amongst all these people over here. Now, when we talk about the uh, future of campus, first of all, to introduce myself, I am from Amity Education Group. I have been working with this organization since 2003, February. So it is all, almost 18 years. So started my journey with the technology part, but now I'm into the holistic development of the campuses. When we talk about Amity, it is, start, uh, it is a well-known brand to everybody. Uh, not to speak much about it, it starts from you know pre-education to higher education models and has its presence in India and across uh, globally in other countries also. When we talk about a campus of the future, as I belong to a technology industry, so I would say definitely technology is going to play a vital role, right? And the, uh, presently also the campuses are moving towards a hybrid model and campus of the future are also going to move in the same direction. Yes, in India, if you talk about education system, we have been a little late because BYOD bringing your own device and other technologies have already been in practice in Europe and other parts of the you know, world. So this has been uh, a process or as a strategy in other countries. But yes, due to this uh, COVID situations, we have brought in the technology and to work like this. The second thing what I feel is the future campuses will focus more about the well-being and the hygiene of the faculties and the students also. We have to focus about that also because each and every person, like let it be the faculty, non-academic person or the students, they are coming from a situation wherein they have gone through a mental and physical and financial loss. And everybody is trying to give their best. So when we are coming up again to the future of the campuses, you have to think about as to what situation the other people have been into. And according to that, we have to move on things, right? When we talk about small little things, let it be the administration, let it talk of the security, let, let it be the medical uh, you know, facilities at the campuses. These all need to be rethought about. It cannot be the same way as they have been earlier, but yes, as you know, uh, Professor uh, Siddharth said, we cannot reinvent everything, you're right. We cannot, we have to restructure the thing. We have to innovate the things. So this way we have to bring in the new ideas, thoughts, and then we have to think about the campus of the future. Uh, thank you, Professor Nikhil. And uh, I, I am very happy that you are from the field of technology and all the panel members sitting here would agree that uh, uh, everything that we do in our institutions, we in one way or the other, attach it to technology, you are right and you are in the right field. Hygiene of the stakeholders is a real critical factor. Of course, because of the type of uh, past two years that every human being has seen, I think hygiene plays a very critical role. We are going to spend some moments of our discussions on empathy and hygiene. Facilities upgradation, I think we have, we are going to spend about 10 to 15 minutes of our discussions on infrastructure and facilities and we will take the success stories of each one of our members. I think uh, I move on to our third panel member, Professor Nagaraj Rao, Rao Vice Chancellor of Kalasingam Academy of Research and Education. Sir, I request you to introduce yourself and your views on exactly what do you think is a campus of future. Good evening all of you again. Good evening to my uh, fellow panelists. Uh, Namaskar, I am uh, uh, Nagaraj, Vice Chancellor of Kalasalingam Academy of Research and Education, which is located in the state of Tamil Nadu near to Madurai. Uh, we are a, a NIRF 50th rank university. Uh, our uh, rank under engineering category is 56, and overall we are 72nd rank uh, in the NIRF ranking. Uh, and we are also uh, a ABET accredited institution. Our 11 engineering programs are accredited by ABET. And also we have both the NAC as well as NBA accreditations. Uh, and recently in the Times Higher Education ranking, we have been ranked uh, 301 to 400 uh, in the Sustainable Development Goals uh, ranking. So which, which uh, in a nutshell puts uh, what Kalasalingam University is all about. We predominantly offer uh, engineering programs, then we have uh, business uh, programs, then we have the basic arts and science, then we have a very large school of agriculture. Uh, so these are, uh, and also the school of architecture, these are our programs. And uh, uh, coming to the, uh, this is brief about my institution and where I come from. And earlier I was uh, 
director of dhirubhai ambani institute of information communication technology gandhinagar gujarat i also was the mentor director at triple it baroda uh, so this is my background and uh, coming to the uh, topic of today what what should be futuristic uh, campuses look like uh, you know uh, i i basically uh, go with a different idea because of my experience in the last 15 16 months because of the pandemic and the location of my university and what what was the various challenges uh, the uh, student community or the stakeholders faced during the last 15 16 months uh, basically all of us we've been talking about digital divide uh, we do have seen uh, that that in a big way wherein most of my students were not able to log in into the online classes uh, because of uh, uh, there are two issues one may be connectivity another may be availability of the type of uh, gadget that they need to have to attend an online class so both we all know india is a vast country and 60 70% of the country is in rural india uh, where connectivity as well as availability of the uh, technical gadgets is a major major challenge this i was able to feel see and you know uh, 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 and uh, understand uh, the various challenges of my uh, students there so i would be a little sort of a disruptor here in this panel when i say i would not be you know yes futuristic campus for whom and and what type what type of students are we are we uh, looking at only the urban class or are we going to see the large vast majority of the rural class also when we are going to talk about futuristic campuses in this country so that is and and let me be very frank i would i would see only india as the uh, center point here let me not talk about world because india in itself is a huge uh, you know educational system where uh, i would always look towards uh, how somebody who is going to mitigate this vast difference this vast uh, you know uh, uh, inequality amongst the uh, population of students who live in the urban world versus the students who live in the rural world so that is where i would like to make my campus futuristic uh, in a way that i should be able to cater to the individual needs of wherever the student is because when you talk about hybrid blended whatever mode of learning whether he is coming half to the campus half he doesn't come to the campus so what technology or what sort of system i would i as the Uh, academic head of the institute would like to give to these students uh, there i would like to see that there is uh, no uh, uh, non uniformity uh, amongst the various stakeholders of the university so uh, that is what i uh, would like and uh, you know i have been talking on this in on various forums uh, uh, when we went into this lockdown uh, we we all used these technologies which were available to us at that point of time zoom had just come in we had microsoft team or whatever we made use of those available technologies which was not made for us it was made for video conferencing for some corporate requirement but it was not truly for education but just because nothing was available and we wanted to reach our students we made use of all these things but now uh, let us concentrate on technology for education i would like to talk to whosoever may be the stakeholder whosoever may be the uh, industry partner who who would join us in this journey uh, must definitely look into this last large divide between the urban and rural india and and try and give a very good technology i would give some examples also in future uh, which would you know knit both this and and make the uh, uh, the uh, you know uh, the make, and bring in as much homogeneity as possible uh when we say that uh, we are giving or building futuristic campuses to our students in particular higher education school education yes it's another major thing but since we are all here and talking about only higher education i would like to uh, see that part being addressed and then all our other things would definitely follow um, whether it is the, the digital campus whether it is going to be all interconnected whether you are going to connect to the rest of the world all that would follow in future but for me reaching the stakeholder you may create everything but ultimately you don't reach the stakeholder is going to be a big challenge so for me i create something but i would like to reach the stakeholder that is what i am looking towards thank Absolutely. you very much i will be able to take uh, any questions in future 
Thank you, Professor Nagraj. I think uh, uh, you've made it, in fact, uh, very clear to all of us here and to all the audiences that reaching all the stakeholders with homogeneity is one of the things that you look at in the future uh, campuses that you modelize or you look at. And I was very happy when you said that you want to make it a foolproof solution based. So I will come back to you because we are going to spend about five minutes discussing the challenges. I would be very happy till then you could make a crisp note on the challenges that you have faced so that it will be easy for all of us to look into that. And we move forward to our next speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, uh, Director of ITS Ghaziabad. Uh, please, Professor, welcome on board and uh, introduce yourself and, and let us know in just what is your ideology, ideological campus of the future going to be? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Manishi. Uh, in fact, uh, it was wonderful perspective. It was brought uh, 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 by Vice Chancellor of uh, Kalasingam University. But before that, uh, just in a brief about myself, I am Dr. Sunil Pandey. Uh, I'm associated with ITS Education Group, which is based in uh, Delhi and CR. Uh, this group is uh, having its four campuses uh, with eight institutions, two hospitals attached to it, and we are uh, we are uh, providing education in the field of information technology, management, engineering, pharmacy, biotechnology, physiotherapy, uh, from undergraduate, postgraduate, doctoral programs. I have been associated with this group for the last uh, 22 years. I joined this institute in 1998, October 98, and since then I have been uh, here. Uh, basically, I come from technology. Uh, uh, I started my career with uh, Global Telesystems in Mumbai, uh, working on mainframe environment, and then subsequently I moved uh, in 1998 to uh, education. And what I could summarize here, uh, in last uh, 20 years, since 1998 till March 2020, the pace on which this technological adoption took place and the kind of awareness was created, it is more than what happened in last one and a half years. At least it, there were lots of myths about technology that how technology can, can contribute in learning, how technology can help in imparting the conventional. I'm talking about conventional education because there are two aspects. One is skill development and one is skill upgradation. And these two things are entirely different. When we talk about upgradation, we take assumption that something is there as basis and then subsequently we try to build upon it. When it, when it comes to the development, that's where the institution like us come into picture where responsibility is start from laying down the foundation and then preparing these students to build upon it. In last one and a half year, especially uh, if, if we see, people used to define uh, up uh, before 2020 that VUCA word, something which was in different way, was volatile, uncertain, uh, complex and ambiguous. But now in last almost two years, that definition has entirely changed. People have started talking about different perspectives. Now, not only academics, which has uh, uh, taste the technology, because as uh, 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 Professor, uh, uh, the Vice Chancellor uh, of Kalasingam University was mentioning, that there was no specific technology available to impart the conventional uh, degree programs. And when this, uh, suddenly, this, uh, in view of this pandemic COVID-19, when things started uh, uh, it, uh, disturbing everyone and then subsequently lockdown was imposed, we were clueless. We used to have video conferencing set up at our institutions, but that, that, that was not meant for such kind of a thing where all these students would be studying a subject which includes theory, theory parts and then practicals and then projects. Now, migrating from the conventional platform to digital platform, it has been a wonderful journey. And not only us as an academic, academic institutions, but the organization, the vendors, those who used to offer the collaboration tools, they started working on a very faster pace so that at least up to a certain extent, this technology could be adopted to make things stable. So the biggest challenge that we have seen during these two years, not only the conducting the classes where uh, the, there were a number of issues, uh, we all must have faced that, that many of the time, these classes became monotonous. So how this technology can create a platform where the classroom becomes more engaging. Conducting practical examination in online mode had exposed the usage of technology that how the programming or how the subjects like electronics where heavy practical, intensive practicals are available, how these things could be, uh, of course, 
that AI, machine learning, augmented reality, all those things are uh, there. But the presence of the person, presence of the faculty who could explain, elaborate, correlate and coordinate that entire process of learning in the classroom, it has to be seen that how technology can help into this. So what I see, and not only technology, ultimately the academic institutions are also uh, that placements is integral part of that entire process because ultimately that input and academic process and the subsequently these things are going to be assessed uh, when by the placements also this is one of the factor. Now industry has also tasted it and we, we are looking at the perspective where the companies have also started thinking on different lines when it comes to placement. So it is not alignment of uh, academic institutions in view of the technology and adopting technology, but how these things could be aligned, realigned, integrated and coordinated with the industrial developments also where the HR, the recruitment process especially is heavily now moving on technology. So that in integration of technology is very important and that's where role of faculty will be very crucial. Because ultimately, the thing has to be taken to the classroom by the faculty. Now, reskilling, upskilling of the faculty is one of the crucial factors. And if it is left untouched, uh, I don't think we would be success, uh, successful in true sense. Because uh, uh, I was going through a research report which was, uh, uh, which, which was published after uh, World Economic Forum meet uh, in 2019, it was. And then subsequently by NASCOM, that in next four to five years, this was before pandemic, that in next four to five years, the existing 40%, at least 40% of human resource, which is employed in industry is going to be replaced if they do not raise skill or upskill themselves. So that on one side, the challenge is the how technology can be effectively used in, in academics. And when it's, I say this, academic institution has three core functions. Number one, the admissions. Now technology has heavily impacted the admission process. Then once the students are admitted, then academics, how the academic delivery has to be ensured in a very effective way, which it, it still has to be seen. And then third, how that integrated approach could be taken where our students are ready to deliver to the industry because ultimately increasing employability will be a big challenge with massive use of technology. So I see that technology has to play important role in all these three facets to make sure that as a academic institution, we are on pedestal of uh, success. Thank you, Dr. Sunilji. And uh, thank you for this introduction of the topic and how you foresee things. And I could see that industry is what you foresee to be the future of uh, campuses. Plus, you also look at uh, technology and integration of technology, which uh, amongst all the facets of an institution, Right. I think that's one of the key things which we are going to discuss in detail on how each area of technology could be integrated in each area functions of an education institution. I think uh, without taking much time, uh, uh, our, uh, our lady, uh, Professor uh, Sasmita Samantha, Pro Vice Chancellor, Kalinga Institute of uh, Industrial Technology. Madam Namaste, I welcome you on board. May I ask... Uh, you to introduce yourself and, and just give us a brief on how do you foresee the campus of future to be? You have been an uh, institutional builder yourself. So please, all to you. Yeah. Thank you, Manis. Uh, myself, Professor Sasmita Samantha. I am the Pro Vice Chancellor of KIIT University. And uh, KIIT is having a pretty fair rank in NIRF. We are having 21 rank among the universities in the country. And in world ranking also our engineering program of computer science is around 500 to 600 and engineering is 600 to 700 in that range. And KIT is mostly known as the impact university. And our world rank in impact world university ranking is around 300. And uh, this is a very diverse and multidisciplinary and large university catering to the need of around 30,000 students at one point of time in the campus. We offer UG and PG program in 200 different um, uh, degrees and also the research program we offer in the diverse field. And uh, what uh, today we all discuss about integration of technology with education. I hope uh, the world has uh, envisioned it and this country also has envisioned it 
uh, before two and a half decades. And I remember that KIT had made its campus Wi-Fi in 1999. And after that, in 2005-06, this country had uh, formulated one commission, National Knowledge Commission, uh, in around 2004-5, uh, towards 2004-5, under the patronage of Sam Petroda. And uh, in that uh, vision, each one of the university in this country was supposed to be given the one GB connectivity by the central government. And all the premier institutions were informed to digitize their education system and connect to national knowledge network. As such, everybody or all the students of the country can get benefit out of that. So integration of the technology is happening in this world or in this country. Uh, since last two and a half decades. Of course, this pandemic has uh, accelerated the process and immediately we had to switch over the whole system to the digitization itself. And according to my thought and my vision, as we offer mostly the courses, KIT is known for offering the courses in technology, medicine, biotechnology, law, management, mostly in professional education. And also we offer courses in social science, of course. But whatever I am finding that after some time, this world will be requiring two types of universities. One type of university where the skill-based degrees will be offered online very i can say that in a very genuine price which will be affordable to each one of the youngsters each one of the person in this globe and another type of university will be experience university where there will be great technology in the campus the cutting edge technology the high-ended equipments the highly talented faculty members having the commitment and skill for engaging the students. Because in the class today, we all find that listening the lecture uh, for the students is perhaps will be the last option for them. Most of the students need engagement in the class itself because class duration continues from five hours to six hours, seven hours in each one of the university itself. And maybe each one of the students in the campus will be moving with tab with laptops in the open-ended library, open-ended labs, and open-ended gyms. And they will be trying to experimenting many things in the campus. As I understand that it's, as a teacher, because learning has different phases. In learning, we start with learning in the class with lecture. Then after learning, a student goes for the experimentation of that learning with the peers and the teachers and with the resources they are having. Third one, with experimenting, they authenticate the information, whatever they have learned, whatever they have understood, that is authenticated. Then fourth one, they go for experimentation. They try to, after authentication, they go for experimentation and they try to get the experience out of that. And out of that experience, the realization comes and that's the flow of information from the wisdom for the student itself. And maybe that sort of campus is now being aspired by present generation kids itself. And if we keenly observe the national education policies and the facilities to be available in the campuses of the large universities envisioned through this national education policy, most of the things have been taken very judiciously, strategically for the Indian universities itself. I can say that this national education policy perhaps is the most aspirational document for the academicians, for the students, for the, I can say the faculty members, whatever we ask for. I don't know to which level we'll be able to implement and in which, by which institution, by which universities, how much funding will be required, how, from where the funding will come. But if it is being implemented, it's a very aspirational document. It has created, I can say that, perhaps it has created lots of enthusiasm among the academicians and students in, the, in this country itself. And in the way it is being discussed many times, I hope it is uh, the, uh, the essence of this policy and particularly the National Research Foundation, National Research Funding System, providing the direct experience of research to the students, even to the undergraduate level of students. That vision, if it is happening, I can say that the campuses will be totally different. Another type of universities, I can say that can be the online universities. And I find that, as we say about academics to industry, in last six months, this digitization has helped the industries come closer to the academics. As I said that, we need experiential campuses 
and without campus some universities will be there on online and maybe now also we have received in the institute of eminence many public sector private sector undertakings big manufacturing industries big knowledge industries are coming to us as such as they can upgrade the qualification of their uh, own staff mostly the manufacturing industry those who recruit many skill development workers starting from the itis diploma the btech engineers they they want to make itis diploma holders the diplomas the btech holder they want to take the advantage of the digitalization system that means the experience uh, it will be happening in the industry itself because they are having quite a good number of equipments where the engineering equipments they are having the people in the industry itself those who can guide them in their doing the practicals maybe those academic industry integrated curriculum is coming in a very different way that content is being developed in a very specialized way where this the with the skill the intellects are being designed and integrated in very judiciously because we are also doing for few industries and few government sector departments so i see that future of the campus will be one is experiential another one will be inclusive the online like many platforms are coming the government of india is also talking about online universities coming for the uh, giving the mandate for that maybe yes. there will be two types of institutions in future good good i think dr uh, susmita ji i got my core content of heart of discussion in what you spoke and that's where i wish to drive this whole discussion to i loved it and my audience loved it because i can see after you spoke the number of questions have increased and uh, smiles on the faces of the audiences on by the reactions you spoke about skill based degree online and then you used the term affordable when we did a small survey before this uh, panel discussion amongst all the stakeholders affordability was the key when they asked about they, uh, they spoke about when you said experience university is i i i think the key where 50 acres and 100 acres of campus is are built up they are just not infrastructure it's the type of experience you create to your stakeholders yes that point has been noted and we will dig deep in deep into what is experience university all about you spoke about the present gen kids that is why i that is where i think many of us lose our focus and we we go into the past type of students know the type of students their thinking their working things have changed from what to why is the is a shift that has happened you spoke very strong about online university and that's where we will need 5 minutes of our discussion as we move forward you said that making it inclusive and like other speakers you also spoke about content i think these are the key points with this i think we move on to our discussions in deep before i move ahead i have a few uh, inputs to all my panel members and as the questions are coming in we have questions from all across that are coming in please pouring in your questions we'll take them one by one my request to all the panel is i understand that they are problems we understand that they are challenges let us have separate forums to discuss challenges this forum let us as much as possible discuss the campus of the future it may be to whatever type of audience that you are looking at it may be to audience without technology is fine but let us look at what is the campus of the future we visualize for them either through nep or through our infrastructure and leadership so the next 20 minutes of our discussions will be quick question and answers to all the panel and as we keep we will move across uh, please don't get too, too deeper into those make it a minute or two just to tell you we will be, just to tell our audiences we will be discussing about future campuses is not only about infrastructure as professor sasmita mr siddharth mr nikhil and our vice chancellor of klu spoke dr sunil also specified it is about technology it is about inclusiveness it is about virtual realities it is about cost it is about hybrid learning it is about data and use of it it is about industry it is about taking the government and students along it is about a few challenges that we we come across it is about disruption it is about creating opportunities it is about core content it is about collaboration and it is about hygiene of stakeholders and not to forget it is about research 
So I'll take one by one each of these points that I spoke about and let's look at what our panel has to sp speak about each one of them. Madam uh, Sasmita, I'll start with you. In the introduction, I think you were amongst the, the last one to introduce, but then this question is very interesting and audience wants an answer to this is, the whole new infrastructure is talking about academic bank of credit. Can you quickly tell them how in future the academic bank of credit will work in, in, in brief? Yeah. In national education policy, to make the Indian education system flexible and accessible to the youngsters and to the world, that this academic bank of credit system has been introduced and envisioned through this. And for this economic bank of credit, the uh, I, we find during this pandemic, perhaps some good things have happened. And uh, today the whole country, or I can say that the dominant part of this country are having the access to the digitization system. And for implementation of this academic bank of credit, integrated database is very much required because whatever has been envisioned in national education policy a student will be giving the flexibility that in which institution he is being enrolled and from where he is going to pass if today somebody has been enrolled in kit maybe he is studying here only for two years again he is going to Deloitte to work for three years then he is going for another one year to iit to take the degree from iit itself so one integrated database of credit must be available in this country where their data should be updated and when the students is taking the credit taking the degree from anywhere else that should be accessible to that institution and the students should be confident that there will be no administrative hassle in between so that is one way of the academic credit second one is we are also envisioning that through this academic bank of credit it will be easier for us for internationalizing our education system the student who is enrolled in kit today he can take some credit from Oxford University. He can go there for one semester, two semesters. He can study some courses and his credit should be transferred to this country or to this university and he can continue with his studies. So this academic bank of credit gives lots of flexibilities to the students, but uh, uh, to bring down the hassle in the system, I think one integrated, the development of, a, uh, of an integrated data, the system is very much required because now this country has developed NDL where we are uploading our all uh, certificates and the final grade report of each one of the students coming out from all the universities. Uh, now it has become the requirement, though it's not mandatory. Maybe in coming days it will be mandatory and it will be the database for the students for, and it will help in this academic bank of credit. Good, madam. Thank you. So, so I, I think to all our audiences and to the students who are here and to a few faculty who have asked this question, credits can be used from various institutions together and finally from the bank of credit whatever is deposited can be exchanged for the type of degrees you wish to pursue in future i'll not take much time i'll move, move across to the man of technology amongst us professor nikhil kumar nigam uh, nigam i want a very quality question to ask you and specifically how do we look at how do we look at the campus of the future to work on a hybrid model. The whole world is talking about the hybrid model. What is this hybrid model and how do you look at it functioning in the campus of the future? Yeah, Dr. Manish, thank you for the question. When we talk about the hybrid model, I would like to say earlier also, the institutions or the educational groups have been working on the hybrid model. Like if I talk about IBD also, we have been you know, already having the courses that are already e-learning courses, right? So when we talk about the hybrid model as of now and in the future, that means the classes are going to be conducted on premises and off premises also, right? Now, when I bring in technology, technology like artificial intelligence, machine learning, or, uh, you know, VR, blockchain, lock many technologies. First thing that I want to say is when we think about bringing in technology to the university or to the education system, we have to think about as Professor uh, Vice Chancellor was saying, KLU, that are the people able to use the technology? Because when we talk about, uh, about the academicians, the faculty and the students, right, their main core area is to teach, to impart knowledge, not to use technology, right? So technology should be simple. It is my personal opinion. 
right it should be like plug and play they should not be you know finding ways about how to work on with the technology Inter like uh, again i will say uh, the same as vice chancellor kel you said in india if you talk about not all the areas in the countries have good internet connectivity they do not have good mobile or in, uh, mobile connections over there right there is a lack of gadgets there is a we have to think about the technology that is compatible to all the devices or the gadgets that are available even at the lower cost not everyone can afford technology and the gadgets right so we are moving far ahead over there when we talk about students i would like to say the students are far more well equipped with technology and the use of technologies rather than the faculty or the academicians can you I'll briefly say, nikhil ji tell us a few of the technological enablements can you just name them for our audiences and for the student and faculty yeah see if we talk about the co common platform that have been used have been zoom right it has been ms teams it has been webex these technologies have been used uh, exam.net so these have been used in various domains it is for the uh, what you say it is the teaching learning platform also lms learning management system also moodle also when we talk about online examinations we talk about online e libraries also we talk about bringing into virtual labs over there also when we talk about having convocations like right? they are also held in the digital mode or the hybrid model over there so we have lot many technologies that are coming in in the hybrid model definitely in in the coming times also we have to work on the hybrid model also but we have to ensure that yes the students are coming to the campus that will ensure their mental and physical health we cannot totally depend on rely on the technology so we have to bring them back to the classroom to the playgrounds and to make them socialize with other people this and is going to be i think i have we got this answer to the audience i'll move on to siddharth ji uh, siddharth i wish to know something about data from you because you are managing a group of universities and uh, see uh, universities are future going to be multidisciplinary there will be students across discipline in the disciplines also the students that are are working together you have used technology to the core all the international universities are now now talking of data and how data will be used can you can you let us know importance of data across campuses across disciplines across departments and how are you utilizing them so so uh, i mean as we all are uh, you know living in the age of uh, data it is all pervasive i mean not just within the education uh, system but even outside the education system data is really the currency with which uh, organizations are driving uh, themselves ahead for the education and especially for us you know how we have uh, leveraged our data uh, is that you know right from uh, uh, so so uh, let me just uh, explain this uh, with the entire uh, you know value chain so we 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 taken a holistic view of we try to take the holistic view of data right from when the student uh, you know is uh, let's say a lead uh, you know for us to the point when the student enters and traverses his whole journey with us uh, and then uh, you know exits with one of the outcomes you know be it a job or a startup or uh, uh, higher education or competitive exams and so on so uh, what we have realized is that Uh, earlier the data was parked in different uh, departments for example uh, you know any legacy institution the exam department would ma would maintain its own data the registration department would maintain its own data the teachers and some, some sometimes the various departments would also manage their own data the training and placement and alumni cell would manage their own data and this is a classic problem of any legacy institution so the first task i'm sure the institution sitting here would have already done it uh, but the first task is to get all the data into one place and trust one source of data so the data gets frozen only at the starting of the value chain and then the same data travels from different part during the entire life cycle of the student with the institution and then uh, you know parks uh, gets parked into uh, into the final master database for future 
Yes, so, so, so that is one correction which we have done with the help of uh, uh, integrating all these standalone uh, systems and finally investing, uh, you know, in a in a proper uh, ERP. So I would only say that this data, if the uh, data uh, hygiene is maintained, it is very useful for getting the students attracted back. And also, uh, when you are launching new upskilling programs, new professional programs. Uh, uh, new industry ready programs to target your own database because over the last 20 years, let's say I, I have lakhs of uh, database of students uh, uh, who can already be my first point of contact for any new campaign or any new course launch or any new, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 thing which we want to take to the students. So uh, in a nutshell, that is what we've done. And uh, you're absolutely right. Data and the discipline around data is going to be key within this entire digital transformation journey of any institution. Thank you, Siddharthji. And the value of data, I think only educationists can understand. And when you dig into it, the value that it gives the students is amazing. I have a, a very important question on the HR to our Vice Chancellor of uh, Kalasingam University. Sir, uh, tell me one thing. A faculty has also asked this question now on the window to all of us. Is the, T, is the faculty going to be replaced in future by technology? Yes or no? What is your views on this, sir? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, is it for me or? I yes, know. yes, it is for you, sir. It is for yeah, you. Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry, Pandey. Oh, 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 Baba Ji, thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, thank you, Manish ji. Uh, see, uh, before taking your question uh, on that, uh, can I can I just uh, tell a few more things about what what I was thinking about? Yes, yes, okay. you can. We have nine minutes yes. to go for our session. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just take two so, minutes to, yes. to answer the entire thing. Uh, yes. So my yes. first, uh, when I started my uh, submission to the uh, audience here, I said. Uh, I would be a, play a role of disruptor, and then I said uh, uh, I would now we I used whatever was available, and now I would look forward towards uh, technology for education. So let me give a small example there. Uh, all of us have been using mobile phones for a long time now, maybe about 17, 18 years. Uh, uh, you know, when we when we started using those phones, the call per minute was roughly about 20 or 21 rupees at one point of time. And uh, so it was totally unaffordable uh, for a lame man. And, uh, you know, you couldn't ever talk about uh, connecting the country the way we are connecting now. Uh, slowly, with the, uh, you know, evolution of technology, um, your CDMA to 2G to 3G to 1G, uh, we, are, we are now telling it is unlimited calls and unlimited bandwidth. So we have come to that extent now. I would like to say, uh, draw a similar analogy. Uh, when I would like to see, I am always for, you know, uh, reaching to each and every student in whatever nook and corner in this country, whatever future campuses we build, we should be able to reach each and every stakeholder there. Sir, can can you give a solution value? to this? I, I agree. Yeah, to yeah, the solution, the solution yeah. obviously must come from the industry like it came at that point of time. That's what I said. It is technology for education and not using some technology which is available and building our futuristic campuses. So yes, we would build all the best possible thing, but I'm not able to reach even 10% of my stakeholders. I don't see that as futuristic campus at all. Now coming back to the question, I have less time. So coming back to the question of whether I'm going to replace the uh, faculty completely and I know they'll all go jobless. I see this as an impossible situation. A faculty is an integral part of any educational system, whether it is virtual or physical. Without faculty, uh, you, you cannot, because uh, if without faculty uh, teaching a student, your life will become life of Yekalavya and not Arjun. So, you yeah. know, a distance education always, you will, you, it's just an example like where, you know, you lose what, you, you don't know the uh, in-between lines and that in-between lines can only be done by the teacher and nobody, all of us, uh, no, uh, definitely do agree. All my fellow senior fellow panelists do agree. Shall do agree with me that there is, there is no replacement for the faculty. And I feel that the role of the faculty is there to increase. It shall not decrease because uh, with the type of technologies that are going to come in, and we want somebody to be used 
but only challenge their IC is training them and putting them in uh, you know the proper perspective and making them uh, renderable to the uh, rest of the society. And Doctor, one I, I think I'll now move to small... Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandeji. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Sunil Kumar Pandeji, you spoke about industry alignment. I want a quick three three important things that every future institutions to be doing to make this industry alignment right. Uh, so see, so what I see, uh, that this is an era of collaboration, coordination, and coexistence. Now, I think, uh, number one, that this is the high time when an academic institution and real collaboration, I'm not talking about those MOUs which are signed, document, and then subsequently it is not followed. So the first uh, thing what I see that there is a need of true associate uh, uh, collaboration with the industry and my personal experience in last six months has been that industry is now coming forward. They, they want people who can contribute, who can help them in, in building their solutions. If with sincerity, academic institutions take lead, I think there is a there is enormous opportunity. So number one, that, 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 that sincere efforts toward establishing collaboration with the industry then coexistence like STPI. I was uh, I had discussion uh, last month with STPI, which is in Bhuneshwar, and uh, uh, it, uh, it's the uh, chief scientist and his consultant to STPI also is talking to him. Now, what is happening till now? Once we used to write a research paper, it was merely a work of a faculty or group of faculty, a group of faculty and students, those who used to work, come up with certain uh, 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 outcome, and then those outcomes used to be published, and then that's all. Now. These STPI, these industries, they are also coming forward to find out and explore the possibilities of joint efforts towards creating patent, the copyrights, and not only patent, which is published. And normally what happens if a patent is submitted, is it published? And then it takes 17 to 18 months uh, to, uh, to, grant, to be granted. And by the time it comes, nobody knows whether it will be granted or not. But now they're what seriously they're looking at some patent work, which is jointly done, academic part, and then practical aspects, what actually industry is looking, and then joint copyrights, joint patents, joint research they are talking about that if they could uh, do something where publications could be in SCI or something like those. Uh, this, so, so joint efforts in that. And third, which I would uh, uh, I see that now, that incubation, the concept of incubation, which four years, five years back used to be a luxury for academic institution is now need of the hour. So these three things, I think, uh, uh, if these things are taken lovely. together, uh, uh, lovely this will help. It's a blueprint of success in industry and you've covered it up so well. I, I could see uh, faculty appreciating. Thank you, uh, Parveen, for giving 10 more minutes because we had so many questions to ask. I would now like to ask, uh, 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 Susmita ji, Susmita ji, uh, three NEP points, not in detail, which is making an addition to our blueprint of success. What are those th three key things of NEP that makes us the campus of the future? Yeah, uh, in this uh, national education policy, the main three points are autonomy to all the stakeholders. Because we see that the decision making authority has been given even to a child which is joining at the three at the age of three in a school, in yes. which language he or she is interested to learn, what subject he or she is going to learn. That authority has been given. Second, Second that is the level of autonomy. Second is the flexibility, diversity, the diversification, bringing diversification in education. The students not only can learn inside the class, the engagement-based learning system envisioned through this uh, national education policy. And third one is multidisciplinary education, integrating the whole gamut of education system. We are discussing, we have realized after a few, so many years of independence that our education system being lots of potential into it. Perhaps this pandemic has given a chance to all educationists starting from the primary school up to the higher education, that this industry came out with a solution in 15 days of adopting the technology for imparting the education to each and every child of this country. Perhaps yes. the industry came out with that solution. And uh, that is inclusivity, you said. 
Yes. Now, so the multidisciplinary education, integrating the whole knowledge sector of this world, that that vision of this uh, national education policy has come. That will be changing the whole campus of any university, the cluster university. Madam, I will move on to Siddharth. Thank you. Yes. Autonomy, <laughs> diversity, multidisciplinary points taken. And Siddharth, I want to know from you. Uh, we have not spoken of internationalization, and that's very important when we make the campus of the future. Can you tell us how education institutions could collaborate to make its campus international? Which are the three or four models that you could suggest without going the, into detail of each one? Yes. So uh, the first uh, model obviously uh, could be uh, with the uh, flexibility around accumulating credits given now is to have collaborations with institutions uh, uh, you know, outside uh, to uh, acknowledge a few credits being provided through their uh, LMS and through their uh, uh, systems. And this is one way uh, to have uh, you know, a joint uh, recognition of the program. So that is one. Second is, uh, you know, I would still say India remains an underrated destination for higher education, uh, you know, crowd international higher education students who come abroad. So the second model which requires uh, the effort from the government side and they are doing it uh, is to have, you know, many more roadshows and projection of India as one of the best destinations for international students to come. Uh, and within India, uh, I, you know, this has been a recommendation to uh, our home state also and many state governments also to position their uh, cities and their states as the uh, safe havens for uh, the international uh, students to come. So second would be, uh, you know, uh, this. And third, I think at the level of uh, research and faculty collaboration, I think that is one very powerful uh, tool uh, through which uh, internationalization can be brought in within the campuses and once the, once the faculty and researchers are connected, then the, at the next level, the students also uh, can uh, you know, collaborate. So these three points on the internationalization front. Lovely. I think uh, this was one of the questions also asked by the audience. Professor Sasmita, uh, there is one question asked by Dr. Rajesh Solanki and Dr. Pratima. And I, I wish to know this from you because you have set up already this system in your organization is describe the expectations from the faculty in the campus of future. Describe the expectations from the faculty in the campus of the future in brief, madam. Yeah. Uh, till now, the faculties were expected to deliver the best in the classroom and to have the best engagement and to have a very competent evaluation system. But in campus of the future or in future, the faculties are expected to be mostly the content creator. They will be creating the content, they will be delivering, they will be putting their realization into the learners and after that see that, see the outcome inside the students. So that, we, that the content creation will be one of the, or knowledge creation will be one of the highest expectation from each one of the faculty member in future itself. Because in, even if we are going for online learning, they are the important of content creation is very much, I can say that very, very important and very crucial. And wow. coming to the internationalization, Sar was saying, I would be like, I would like to add something like that. Perhaps KIT is one campus which, which in housing highest number of foreign students in this country. And we are getting students from 52 countries. And we see the expectation of the foreign students in any of the international campuses is education, experience, and employment. And education, experience, that can be created by the universities. But for employment, some type of policy changes are required. Whatever has been envisioned in NEP that the policies in upgrading the education system, bringing different things, but employment opportunity creation in this Thank country you. of course can I, I have missed one of the stakeholder and i would not do injustice to them and that's a direct question to nikhil kumar nigam and nikhil kumar nigam this is regarding students students who are the core of what we are discussing tell me one thing there was one student who has asked me a clear direct question saying in this transformation in this place where you all all are discussing the future of universities what unique challenges will the students' community face? Can you specifically tell me one or two challenges that the students will face? 
See, the first uh, challenge that I can think about is again coming back to the normal mode, right? And overcoming their physical and mental stress or the situation that they have been going through. And okay. then deciding upon whether this is going to continue in a physical mode or a hybrid mode or maybe going back to the online mode. So it is not yet decided. Right. For us, when I think about the technology ensuring the well-being of the students and so, apart from education system transforming uh, lectures and education to the students, I think about bringing in contactless medical rooms, yeah, medical centers at the campuses and the universities that should have uh, apps and records of all the students and the employees. You have to think about the medical conditions of every visitor that is coming to your campus who is interacting to your employees and students over there. You have to think about bringing in more of physical tasks, activities, yoga session, meditations, group discussions. These activities, uh, what do you say, mentor mentee system, mental counseling, uh, you know, uh, places in a uh, system as in online and physical mode also to understand the challenges that the students are facing because this is not yet ended up. It is going to continue. We have to keep working on these platforms. Good. I think thank you for this. I, I have now quick coffee table questions to Professor uh, Sasmita. Madam, your question is campus of the future affordable or expensive? Uh, you, you are on mute, Madam, you are on mute. As I, already, as I have already spoken, there will be two types of universities. One is affordable, safe, accessible to all. And second one is experience best that can be expensive also if it is not supported by government or supported by some funding agencies itself. But I see that after this, perhaps after this pandemic, the university institutions of this country, as it is envisioned in our mandate that universities should be open to all. And that sort of flexibility, each one of the university in this country is going to enjoy that, that really our, the system is getting universalized being accepted universally. Good. Thank you. I think uh, to Siddharth, my question to you, what do you, a quick answer on this, what do you foresee the role of the statutory bodies in future? Statutory bodies uh, to assume the role of uh, an enabler and uh, also promote self-regulation uh, within the entire uh, ecosystem and let the autonomy clause which is there in NEP also be implemented in spirit. Wow, lovely. Madam Sasmita, again a question to you. Universities of the present day are setting up campuses with buildings and programs are outsourced to private bodies like uh, Udemy, Undemy or Clate Learning uh, just to take a few names for our discussions. And uh, though education is not for profit, these private bodies are coming into the education system. Are these the future campuses or no, they will not be the future campuses. What is your take on this? A question from a stakeholder. Yeah, uh, whatever we find the approach of national government in last few months, we find that uh, in different forums, the online universities are being discussed. I don't know whether those uh, platforms will be converted into university that I cannot say. But online universities may come like distance education, university like IGNO is already there in this country. They are imparting the education in the distance mode itself. And coming to the big campuses, the universities are setting up the experience, the universities are trying to bring different type of experiences. It's not always about the technology. Slowly we are shifting our system from a mass-based education system to an individualistic approach, understanding the aspiration of the group of the students coming to the university, what type of experience they aspire from us. It can be a campus under, on a hilltop with all nature, with the environment, with greeneries, and a few techno and some technologies ingrained in this as as the students' experience will be different. So experience aspired by the students, the students' aspiration will be playing a major role in future in the campus. Lovely. So I think with this, I have a quick question to ask all my panelists one by one, not more than 30 seconds each. Yes. Start with Nikhil. What are the new opportunities do you think are evolving because of the new campus that we are seeing? New opportunities that are coming up. Quick ones. Uh, I believe the first first one will be the jobs that are not yet thought upon. Lovely. So, new jobs are going to be created in the market for the students that we have to think and innovate about and make our student placed over, over there. 
So that is why they call it. So giving you opportunities to the students for the jobs that are not visible now, but might be visible two years or three years down the line. So to all the audience, new jobs are going to come up and that's an opportunity. Siddharji, what do you think are the opportunities coming up because of the campuses of the future? Uh, one, uh, content uh, development and content generation in vernacular language. Uh, next five years, uh, big uh, market, big explosion uh, uh, to come from players outside the education system uh, more. Uh, and if, if we want, the education system can also reap uh, this benefit. So one, one is content. Second, uh, uh, opportunities for all the startups uh, to take benefit of the incubation uh, center ecosystem, which has come up uh, very vibrantly uh, across the higher education system. That is second. And third opportunity is uh, all the uh, short term placement link online learning programs which can be curated uh, by within the university itself. Lovely. You got startup into the system also. Amazing. Professor Sasmita, what opportunity? We have completed our time. I'm just taking one more minute more. Professor Sasmita, what do you think is the opportunities opened up because of the campuses of future? Yeah. Collaborative work and the person best job opportunities. Whatever I want to do in my life, that person centric job so opportunities. I, I take good. your, I take your collaborative work because I think we are all talking of collaboration. Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey has just joined in. I missed him for a few minutes. Sunil Kumar ji, what is the opportunity that these new campuses of the future are opening up? You are on mute. You are on mute. So what I think uh, the opportunities are enormous because the way technology adoption seconds. has been. Sir, in 30 seconds. Uh, the, the way technology adoption has taken place, there's a lots of opportunities are coming up, not only uh, for the faculty, but the students as well. And this is the, this is the golden time uh, to start joint collaborative research work, coordinate with industry and students and act as a faculty, act as a bridge between industry and academic institutions to, to take part. So it's an equal opportunity for everyone, whether a student, whether faculty or the institution as management. I think lovely. Thank you. And let me tell you what a lovely panel this has been and what a lovely topic. I would have chaired more than 50 panel discussions. Let me tell you, this is one of the best ones and the quality panels that I have seen. Just to just to end with everyone, I told I will be talking about the names of the people whose quality questions were asked. Dr. Rajesh Solanki, Dr. Praveen Pratima Khandelwar and Dr. Soumya Sharma. Thank you for your lovely questions. We have tried to answer all of them. And before I say, I close, there is a world of opportunities. There is a world of opportunities opened up because of the campuses of the future. Yes, no stakeholders will be left untouched. No stakeholders will be left Very untouched. Very collaboration, there is optimization of resources, common facilities comes into use, extensive outreach possibilities is what we are seeing. Investment opportunity increases. <laughs> new placement opportunities are going to open up. International uh, partnerships, which were a dream, are now possible for even a common institution in the country. Starting institution okay. for teacher training is happening. Resource for content development has increased. So with this, I wish all of you... Uh, great Manish, Dr. Manish, if you could allow just for a second. I pass this, on the batteries. This is... This, second. This is this, this was really wonderful moderation by you, Dr. Manish Ji. It's Thank a wonderful panel. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So, Parveen, all to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I have to agree with Dr. Pane. That was wonderful moderation. It's such a, a huge subject. And I love that everybody brought a different view to the table. And, you know, with, with educators like yourself and administrators like yourself, I think the future is looking super bright and I'm so excited and I look forward to continuing the conversation next year. Thank you so much again for wonderful moderation, wonderful sharing and see you all again soon. Do take care, please. Namaste. Bye. Thank, Thank you. So Goodbye. Thank you, Goodbye, everyone. Good to Thank everyone. You.